Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming along for the ride. In this video, we're going to look at a, another Chinese pen, a Lorelei. I saw this pen on eBay, and the auction was definitely very interesting. So I bought one. And uh, much to my surprise, it came in this very nice, elegant package. Yes, it's an extra fine nib. Not my preference, but I didn't have a choice at the time I bought this pen. The pen box just slides out of this cardboard sleeve, and you see another nice white box with some nice silver engraving. Very elegant packaging. The cover just pulls off and you see the pen. And it's also a very attractive pen. So I make noise with the packaging. And like high-end pens, it has a little tag on it. You wouldn't want to not know what the pen was. It was just sitting in the box. And yes, it is a, a Ling Mo. And it's a Lorelei. As we try to orient it properly. It slides out of this nice little coffin container velvety cushion there. Now we see the pen. We'll take the label off. It's just not functional for writing. Not needed. Nice, strong, sturdy clip. Functional clip. This pen is just a classic design in every way. Bullet-shaped, cigar-shaped, whatever you want to call it. A nice cap band here, which is Engraved with Lorelei and the model number 019. It's an unscrew cap. It takes about one and a quarter turns. And you see a very nice attractive nib. Classic design section. The same material as the pen. So overall, nice. Not something we haven't seen before. Uh, but it's done well. This particular acrylic I haven't seen. I've seen similar ones, and we'll do some comparisons later on. But let's look at the pen, and let's see how it works in the hand. It feels good in the hand, too. The section is nice. It's a nice big flare-out at the bottom, which if you're going to hold it near the nib, that might be something you may not like. The threads are fine. You don't feel them. There's just a slight step up and, it, you know, you can feel it, but it, it's not going to stop you from holding the pen there, at least from my fingers experience. So let's dive in a little bit deeper and look at this uh, pen, you know, and maybe contemplate a little bit about what market they may have been going after and why they designed this pen the way they did. So to me, the pen that comes to mind is the Pen BBS one. But what's interesting in this light is the dark bands in this are not really black, they're blue. I hadn't really noticed that. I have some sunlight now coming in with the LEDs, and that certainly gives it a different look. I do prefer the look of the acrylic that the Pen BBS pen used. You know, the yellow is a little bit darker and a little bit more intense, and, and the darker lines are black and, and not blue like they are and the Lorelei. I've uh, disassembled the uh, Lorelei. And one of the things that I enjoy about the community that we're in is um, a fellow pen reviewer who I, I know uh, well, uh, Pen Boy Roy, recently received his uh, Lorelei and he immediately said, Looks like a pin BBS 308, and I didn't come to that conclusion right away. But his comment intrigued me, and so we have a 308 here. And again, we'll see some similarities with that design. The clip is slightly different, but still some similarities. The cap band extends to the end of the cap like the 308 and I think that's an excellent design if you're going to put a cap band on that certainly makes it functional 
and we have some labeling along the cap band and that's also nice if we look inside we'll see the same type of design except the lower leaf seems to have a cap liner we'll explore that a little bit more with the LED light but what's more amazing is if you look at the nib assembly the nib assembly looks surprisingly similar to the one in pen BBS pens in fact it's identical it screws in and out has those two o-rings very nice nib on the Lorelei nice two-tone nice engraving you know say I'm not going to pronounce it but a different brand and maybe it's related to it but we can take the Lorelei nib assembly and screw it into the pen BBS pen so that's as far as the identical nature goes uh, the caps and barrels are different they don't interchange but at least one component is the same so let's explore the cap with the LED light and it does have a cap liner so that certainly differentiates the design from the pen BBS design where the cap liner is just a machined piece in there and it's, it's a one part cap but there is you know uh, this finial on top which keeps the clip in place with that key ring and it unscrews and screws off which I'm, I'm not going to do now there was one more other design similarity is this o-ring at the end of the section which is above the threads the threads aren't the same so these sections aren't interchangeable but it's another design attribute that is very similar between the pens and also the design of the section is similar concave with a nice flare out at the end just before the nib the converters are also interchangeable the uh, Lorelei is uh, shorter it has a piece of metal in it this is the new converter pen BBS doesn't have a spring in it but the opening is the same opening on it so if you wanted to you could swap converters I have to do a correction you cannot swap converters at least with this model because this extra length doesn't fit in the barrel so you can't close the barrel with this pen BBS converter even though it does fit the section that's why the converter on the Laura Lee is shorter interesting design change I'm not certain why it took some effort to pull the nib and feed out of the section or the assembly but a trick that I found that works with most pen BBS pens also which sometimes have a challenge pulling out the nib and feed is I did my soap and water flush and I think that provides a little bit of lubrication between the, the nib and feed and the assembly so it took some effort but it did come out and the feeds are both identical which is what I expected and the nibs are also within reason also identical in size and shape here's a little chart that I've been keeping and I've now added the Shinyo nib to the chart and I put it right next to the pen BBS nib so I think um, I'm going to reassemble the pen we've done enough comparisons and other things uh, and put some ink in it it is an extra fine nib so I have my fingers crossed that it'll be one I can live with but now knowing that it all comes apart I have a phenomenal amount of nibs to uh, swap in there if I decide that's what I want to do <clears throat> so what ink to put in it I haven't used this sink so I figured I'd give it a shot I was looking for a green ink and this is certainly green but this bottle it's impossible to draw up ink from this bottle because you need to draw up ink from the back of that feed where the section is and you just can't get that under 
the ink. So I had a great opportunity to use my ink miser bottle, pour the ink in here. I'm going to pour it out through this spout and then wart, rinse it out and we'll see how it looks. Well, I did uh, drain the ink out of the tilt well and I cleaned it with some soap and water. And there is a little bit of staining, but that doesn't concern me at all. This certainly worked extremely well to fill the pen from that private reserve bottle that was not designed to be filled with a pen. I could have used a syringe to fill the converter, but then I wouldn't have saturated the feed and I'd much rather prefer pulling up ink through the feed when I fill my pen. Yes, I have the Lorelei and uh, Pen BBS 308 side by side here before we get into the writing sample. So I did end up buying a second Lorelei from uh, Bobby, Chinese pen on Etsy. Here's uh, his listing and I got it in the other color, Sedum. I just want to compare them. You know, it is interesting that they emulated so much of the characteristics of the Pen BBS 308. But here's where the rubber meets the road. You know, to me there's a tactile sensation with pens or writing instruments that you use. And they are, these are both extremely close, but I give a slight edge to the Pen BBS. It just feels a little bit better. It weighs slightly more, about a gram, a gram and a half. Uh, I think the clip looks nicer, the band is done nicer. It's just slightly better. I wouldn't call it substantially better. They did a good job in emulating the characteristics of the 308, and this is a, you know, a classic design that thousands of pens have. You know, your cigar-shaped, torpedo-shaped, however you want to describe it. But at the end of the day, I would prefer my Pen BBS 308 over the Lorelei 019. And that's my opinion. So let's put nib to paper and see how this extra fine works. The one I ordered uh, from uh, Bobby on Etsy is a fine, so I'll be probably a little bit more happier with the fine. But again, since we know from our explorations, this nib can be replaced by a lot of other nibs that I have. So I can easily change the writing experience if that's what I want to do. So overall, I'd have to say for an extra fine nib, this is about as good as they get from my experience. I uh, put the microphone near to the paper only for these last bit of writing, so you got to hear that. Before that, you probably heard more breathing than you did nib sounds. I apologize for that. But this just works well. And this uh, Private Reserve Spearmint Ink is really a, a, a very nice dark green can be used in professional use as well as for daily use or letter writing use. The nib is consistent. It's smooth. I mean, I'm, I'm much happier than I ever expected to be. So now let's do a rating. I'm going to give it an 8.6. And I don't give it any checks. I don't find anything exceptional about the pen. It's a basic pen, basic design, nice resin. It's not posted here because I'm writing over the tripod and it has a tendency to hit the tripod, which we don't want to do. So I like it. Let's go into the details. It works good on this uh, copy paper. So let's go in to the different attributes from my perspective. 
Design gets two check marks. Engineering gets two check marks. Build get two check marks. They're all okay, not great. Um, writing gets two check marks. Again, good, but not great. Um, from a look, I'll give it three check marks. It definitely looks good, but then it's a classic design, and I would expect it to look good, and that resin looks good. And it's a little bit of a different resin than I have on any other pen. And for value, we're also going to give it two checks. You know, I don't think it's overpriced. I don't think it's underpriced. I think it's right priced. But considering you can get many varieties of Pen BBS 308 pens for a similar price, that puts its value in perspective. So we've explored another uh, new pen model from a Chinese manufacturer and overall I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, it'll go into my daily writer pack for a while until that uh, converter runs out of ink. And I may swap nibs but not something I'm going to do now because sometimes you just need a, a nice extra fine if you're writing on some uh, less quality paper and I think it will work well for that use. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed a look at a, a pen that you may have considered or you may have seen, but may have been on the fence. And hopefully uh, with uh, this review, you've been able to decide which side of that fence you want to be on. So may you have many great writing experiences. Explore the wonderful world of pens and inks and papers and use the instrument to write with and draw with or doodle with and have at it. So enjoy your day. Enjoy every day. Until the next video, bye for now. I do like the ink and nib combination. <laughs>